Yeah, Alpha Vic was just on top of them. If they're not calling that he's up, then uh, then he's he's dead. Oh hi, good luck. Thank you. Greetings, this is Dyslexi, and welcome to another episode of Hindsight. Today we'll be looking at an attempted withdrawal from a town in the middle of a recent mission. This will be covering two squads primarily, mine, which was Charlie, and Delta, which was an overflow squad of sorts with quite the cast of characters. The first phase of the mission had involved a convoy moving through enemy territory to link up with Bravo squad, which was cut off at mission start. The convoy itself went interestingly, but that's not the focus of what we'll be doing here. As we arrived at Utzendorf, my squad had been assigned to hold the northwestern side of it. Arriving there, we did a quick survey of the area and found that there weren't too many useful buildings. However, the area we were defending against was mostly a set of open fields, and looking around revealed enough firing positions that I felt like we'd be able to make use of the area pretty effectively. The, the uh, vehicles by the sea mark are either warehouses or just uh, roofs with a wall in it. There's no cover. Do the best you can. Uh, Chu's gonna try to push towards that house near the crossroads. It's got a good vantage point facing northwest. Uh, My second fire team, led by Shaktak's number one fatality, MG Bait, headed to a nearby house to set up as best they could, covering the northern road adjacent to Bravo Squad, which was primarily covering the north and north northeast. Surveying the area, I went around Charlie One's position and adjusted them according to what I expected the threat to be. Platoon headquarters showed up nearby to see for themselves what our sector was like. Spread out to where some of you are on this one up here and some of you are there, so when a shell comes in, it doesn't kill all of you at once. What's our uh, our organic AT? Is it just RPG-26s or something? Yeah. Yeah. Yay. This door over here. Right. Since we're, we're being attacked by armor, right? So we don't want everyone... If we can keep people from being this close, it would Contact be really good. On the east side, yep. two times Humvees east of Alpha marking... Uh, Roger. No. Bravo, make sure it's tied in with Alpha. You can you cover don't their want to uh, do that. left flank there. You want a keyhole Bravo, with Bravo, armor. Bravo, don't let them have a huge area to shoot into. <laughs> Itty bitty door is good. Oh. Seeing the seemingly poor position that Charlie had been assigned, platoon headquarters, which was Dallas, suggested moving us near a compound to the north of Bravo to screen. Uh, it looks like we really can't see a whole lot here. Let's uh, push you forward towards C screen. Slightly adjusted, uh, so you can cover the north flank and that death lay that leads downhill to the north. That'll be a screening position, so if we take serious enemy armor, we can pull you back uh, and you can Break see the fallback from position. Delta. I took a moment to consider this. While our position wasn't perfect, I had enough space to keep people reasonably spread out and able to put effective fire into the fields near us. Looking at the proposed position, I didn't like the thought of hanging my squad out in front of the rest of the platoon like that. Bravo seemed positioned such that it felt like we'd be redundant, and it'd also leave our current position poorly defended. Falling back from such a place would also be dangerous due to the open terrain between it and the town. The fact that it looked like we'd be a worm on a hook dangling out there all by ourselves wasn't very appealing. Since Dallas was nearby, I went over to talk to him in person about my concerns. Hey Dallas. Yeah? Is there something we'd be able to do at that screen that Bravo's not able to do from where they are? Just anything that basically would flank to the left there. I mean, these are better positions. I just, you're going to be sitting here for a little bit because it's probably going to be EI yeah, pushing straight for Bravo. I don't know the enemy attack arc, so they... Bravo, I mean, we can Bravo, do it. I'm just, just worried that we'll get out there and get you're gonna be cut off. Dry. Yep. North. These positions aren't fantastic, but we've got everyone spread out. And we have a, yeah. Alright. We can keep... Alright. Just unlikely to receive contact until Bravo's hard pressed. Yeah, but it's Bravo. We, we know how this is going to go. While this meant we wouldn't likely see as much action at the start, I felt that the flow of the mission would give us plenty in due time, and I wanted my squad to be alive for that. So this might have been kind of a supplementary position here. We're expecting Bravo and Alpha to get pushed pretty hard, and we'll kind of be the strength when we fall back. Murder them. Just then, we started receiving our first enemy sightings. How confident are you with that? Oh, not at all. I was okay. even had marks for 250. Right. So, Bravo, I think the best we can do is just wait until we like basically contact distance before we start using those. Oh, yeah. They'll be best if we like retreat in among the buildings. Yeah, like if there's a Bradley, just, just run up to it until you can touch the hole and back up a few feet and fire. 
I'm pretty uh, confident about these garbage. Command Delta has Bradley oh, yeah. on position of one. I'm waiting for the symbolism for these dumpsters to be on fire. Well, I'll wait till Roger. Right on Delta, top. I don't have direct uh, support for you. Alpha vehicles currently uh, occupied. Try and like deal with AT. <laughs> Delta, which had been formed partly after mission start and didn't have their own BMP supporting them, was taking armor contact they couldn't manage themselves. Man, Delta needs some sort of support. We do not have big. Do you have any AT to deal with this, Bradley? Oh, negative. Charlie, is your vehicle occupied at this time? Negative. Charlie, send over your vehicle. Support Delta for now. Platoon tasked our BMP, known as Charlie Vic, to go help them. Since our area had yet to be pushed by armor, this didn't cause any hardships for us. Charlie, you're gonna have to rely on Delta for your close protection. Understood, I'm gonna switch to their nav now. Okay. So for, uh, for, for my fellow infantry, although it sounds like we just lost our Charlie Vic to Delta, we did, so <laughs> just cross your fingers. Delta, Charlie yeah. Pickle is inbound support. Me too. Platoon Delta has made contact with Charlie Pickle. Whatever, I'll shoot him, brother. A curveball happened here. The enemy recognized we were defending Otzendorf, and had decided to start bypassing us to go for the bridge at Yasdorf. All units, oh, okay. looks like enemy armor is slowly bypassing <laughs> us and to moving towards Yasdorf to our west. <laughs> Recognizing that a withdrawal was imminent, I had Crane come with me to retrieve our vehicles and stage them closer to the squad. Hey Crane, let's go grab uh, two vehicles. We're not running away, we'll be right back. Let's get the be fuck right out of here. Partway there, she had to suddenly step away to respond to an insurgent feline attempting to raid the table stage pizza storage site, delaying her slightly. Dallas detailed the fallback plan. Plan will be as follows. Alpha will fall back first. Alpha would move first, taking up a position near the town to cover other squads as they withdrew. Each would fall back a bit further than the last, with Charlie being the last one to leave. So it would be Alpha, Delta, Bravo, and then Charlie. At this point, our BMP returned to us, having finished supporting Delta for the time being. Charlie back. Copy. Platoon, Delta. Send. Roll's dead, Cypher's got Delta. Delta reported that their squad leader, Roll 1D20, had been killed, putting Cypher in command. The contact they'd taken resulted in Dallas choosing to expedite the fallback, not wanting to leave Delta in their position for any longer than necessary. So the plan now, if you take a look at the map real quick, the uh, we're going to be the last ones that move. Alpha's moving to that battle position, marked to the west, then Delta to theirs, then Bravo to theirs, then we bypass all of them, get to ours, which is in Jastor, and then the rest of them collapse back towards us. Alpha ended up getting into a fight just as they were about to move, delaying them. So it'll be probably five-ish minutes before Alpha starts moving. So it might be 10, 15 before we're moving. MG Bait, my second team leader, asked, Do we need to redeploy to take over Alpha Bravo's position? I'm gonna go with no. I think that our goal at that point will be, because Alpha will be supporting us to the west, so we'll want to stay here because we have that kind of like that straight shot out of here. So we'd want to stay roughly where we are right now, and Charlie Vic could be covering to the east at that point. Command told Delta to let him know if any armor started pushing their position. Delta, report if you have any enemy armor push on your position again. Roger, I'll let you know. Delta reiterated that they had no AT and would pull back if approached by armor. When we make this move, we will... Delta has no AT. If we get hit by armor, we'll fall back. Never mind. Yeah, we'll we'll try and keep it spread out amongst the vehicles on this one. We don't want to all pile on the BMP this time, although I would put some infantry in there if we can. Alpha was trying to disengage, thinking they'd be free to move in about a minute. Alpha, this is Platoon. Can you fall back within the next minute or no? Hey, firm, within the next minute. Gonna need all that time. Roger. As Alpha withdrew, Chris, their squad leader, gave Delta an update. Hey Delta, this is Alpha. You're gonna have a shit ton of contact here. Alpha's north. friendly Humvee is northwest of Delta, Earth. begin fallback. Delta was having trouble disengaging from infantry that had closed on them. Dallas warned them again that they needed to move or be flanked from the north. Attempted, we have close infantry contact uh, to our southeast. Roger, you're gonna get flanked from the north from Alpha's old position if you don't get out of there within the next minute or two. Delta. Both squads that had attempted to withdraw had been slowed by close infantry contacts. I wanted to try to avoid this for Charlie. So I asked Crane to move our trucks closer to the edge of town, allowing them to be masked from the east 
and make it easier for us to quickly mount up and leave. Can you drive the trucks behind that facing out to the west? Behind that, is it on the east side or on the south side? That's on the south side. Okay. So they're shielded from the north and the east as best as possible. With Bravo soon to withdraw, I let Charlie 2 know that once they moved, they needed to pull closer to the rest of the squad to the west. Things would likely start happening very quickly at that point, with the entire town being open to the east and north, and we'd want to be positioned to leave as quickly as possible. Two, for, once Bravo uh, has moved out of there, I need you to pull back closer to us. Move, we're likely going to have you move simultaneously uh, due to the delayed nature of this fallback. The plan had evolved to where Delta and Bravo would be withdrawing together. I took a moment and marked our trucks for clarity. And then, a wrench was thrown into the plans. Bravo, uh, wait one minute to begin fallback. Bravo, Delta, Delta, Delta. Break, break, break. Delta got engaged by Bradley. We are down. I turned and moved a few meters in that direction. Platoon Delta, Bradley is to my east, two to three hundred uh, meters. We got infantry contact uh, east of Bravo, northeast of two. Delta had called contact, and while they hadn't directly requested help, it was clear they'd need it, as they had some sort of armor near them. After a moment of consideration, I had our BMP start to head to support them. Charlie, Vic, are you uh, engaging anything? Negative. Can you should drive down this road that I'm on to the south and try to get on that main Charlie, road and look east towards Delta? Charlie, I need your vehicle got hit. Bravo, yep, begin fallback immediately. Charlie's tasking our vehicle to go overwatch Delta at the moment. What else do you need from us? Delta's likely need uh, some kind of assistance. I will try and assess we need your infantry as well. Their vehicle just went catastrophic. They're uh, critical, probably on medical here. With word that they had a mass casualty situation, I had Crane follow me as I headed in trail of our BMP towards Delta's position. I didn't want to move any of my infantry unless absolutely necessary, and for the moment it seemed like our BMP would be sufficient to support. Right as our BMP arrived, Delta gave us an update. So I think you're a weapons free. Bravo, move to Delta, Battle Mission 1. There are two times Bradley's down the road from Delta's position. I called for Charlie 2 to pull back just as Bravo announced their movement. 2, I need you to pull back to 1. Two, Bravo, De Bravo's moving out. Two. Roger. The Delta threat was apparently two Bradleys, and I was confident our BMP-3 would be able to take them out. When I finally got a view down the street, several vehicles could be seen burning. Delta's all fucked up over here. Running closer, I soon found the mass casualty site for Delta. I held back for the moment, seeing that the Delta medic was working, and wanting to get an idea of the situation before moving closer. Where at? Well, we're not moving up to them yet. Okay. They're where the stuff's burning. Looks like their medic's up there. I was surprised to find a Bravo member nearby. Bravo had withdrawn, and I had no idea why there were two of them still there, but I knew I could make use of them soon. You're Bravo? I headed over to the casualty site to try to spur some movement. With this mask, guys, right here, you're yeah. Alpha Vic, this is a Bravo Vic. Just want to say that's a great position. If you can yeah, move, fucking bandage, move now. If you can pick him up, pick him up. I grabbed Kevvo, who was miraculously still alive an hour into a mission. I knew fate was eyeing me critically, trying desperately to ensure that Kevvo would never leave the field of battle alive, but I still had to try. To expedite treatment, I told all wounded to get in the BMP, along with Crane, so that they would be protected and could be treated on the move if hey, need if be. if you need a medic, get in the BMP. Nine, we can carry them. Yeah, I'm gonna have people that need medics get in the BMP. Crane, you'll get in there as well. We're gonna load them in the BMP just for expediency. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, that's fine. Are yeah. coming in here? Yeah. And just treat everyone that we load into that. Delta, move your loaded, uh, Allie, load your wounded into the, the vehicles. Bank. Delta was almost sorted. The casualties were either in or near the BMP, and the others were running near or past it. Now was the time to make use of the Bravo members. Hey, roster. Yeah. You don't have, you're not with Bravo right now, correct? Correct. Can you go grab another truck? Hey, firm. And just, you know, just follow with the rest of us, but we need more trucks and we can get them. If you're not wounded, get away. 
Alright, Charlie, we're gonna get these pointed out of here. We'll call back to the It was getting pretty hot. It was it was time to go. Probably fix. Back up. Reverse. I'm the evil people too. People were seemingly worrying about what vehicle to get in. In the context of what was happening, it didn't matter. Man, I said as much. How many CCF? CV? It doesn't matter. Just get the vehicles. Get in any vehicle. All right. One truck made it away. I told my fire teams to stage closer to our trucks, a few hundred meters to my north. One, two, get near the Charlie trucks to the southwest. If you guys are good, get out of here. As the other truck left, I jumped into the BMP and told Freddy it was time to go. You up. Charlie Vic, let's try and get out to the Scanning. northwest to our Charlie trucks. Uh, two's down to three. I hopped into one of the bow guns and realized that the driver wasn't actually in their seat. I almost switched to driver, but I didn't want to step on the crew's toes. There's no one's on the driver's seat right now. No Confusingly, Killock, the Delta medic, said that their squad leader needed a lift to the west. We just had two trucks with plenty of capacity leave. How do you get left behind? Charlie, this is Delta. I need your uh, Charlie Vic to pick up my stragglers. This fucking one time drill mark's a lie. The crew was suddenly remarking on a tank. There's a pet. I jumped out and headed for nearby cover, intending to stay dismounted to sort out the Delta squad leader situation, something that would be hard to do if I was dead in a BMP. The tank engaged and disabled the BMP, forcing the crew to bail. Tank ran up on us. We're down. We're all moving northwest. I've run the spot like Charlie Roger. I threw smoke to cover the wounded crew as Crane attempted to help. We gotta fucking go, guys. We have to go now. The rest of the squad had enemy infantry approaching them close, just as had happened to Alpha, Delta, and Bravo previously. We've got both EI northeast of vehicles. Freddy was dead. The tank was nearby, but it hadn't yet pushed closer. The situation was bad, but we had two trucks located by the rest of my squad, and it would likely be enough to carry everyone currently dismounted near me. I updated command on this. We gotta go, guys. We gotta get fucking moving. Charlie Vic has destroyed the uh, dismounts we're moving on foot now. I need all of you to go towards the Charlie Tuck truck mark. Charlie Tuck mark. Treating casualties was slowing us down, but I did what I could to tell those around what the plan was. Time was of the essence. The tank could show up at any moment. We, we is she stable? We're gonna be dead in 30 right, seconds. We don't get out of here. Finally, we were mobile. I ran by the Delta survivors, telling them where to go and that they'd be left behind if they didn't follow us now. They seem to acknowledge. Let's go, let's go. We're going north to the Charlie Trucks mark. If you guys don't get there, you're going to be left behind. You need to go now. SL, you doing alright? No, but we'll be there in a second. Glancing back, I could see people following. Just to fit as best you can, we have some Delta Stragglers we're trying to Delta unfuck. Over the radio, I heard something garbled, but wasn't able to focus on it. Things were happening very quickly now. Get these trucks hey, on the help. west side of this building. When I turned around, the situation wasn't what I expected to see. Delta wasn't with us. It's Delta, very fluid right M60 now. A truck had just driven past for some reason. An M60 was reported as being in the area, and Charlie 2 team leader was now attempting to get it. I ran back to try to see what the hell was actually going on. 
north. He's trying to prosecute that tank. Bravo copy, we're engaging. Roger, Alpha. Charlie, Delta, it's your life is gonna need assistance here. The truck was toast, the tank was near, and so were enemy infantry. Delta wasn't making out of this. I realized at that moment that there was only one call to be made, so I made it. One, two, man up in one of those trucks and leave. Go to Alpha Battle for this one. Delta right now. New city is on Delta position. Yeah, I was surprised that the person beside me was MG Babe. I hadn't realized he'd run this far up searching for the tank. At this point, with Kevo as one of the Delta survivors to my front and MG bait right beside me, it was like I was stuck in a suicide sandwich. The outlook was grim. Leave him with me. You go try to get out of here. Instinct, we're going to be heroes. If he doesn't make it to you in 30 seconds, I need you to just drive away. We'll, we'll take care of him, so... MG Bait realized he wouldn't make it either, and he told his fire team to mount up and leave. As I lay there wounded, I tried to think of how we might get out of our predicament. The truck Charlie had left for us was an option, that's why they left it, but we'd never make it there. I was hoping Instinct would at least have a chance to use his AT. I could distantly hear an auto cannon firing. Then I woke up. Your bodies. Oh fuck. Hey, I'm sorry about this, but it was us or everyone. No. Just in time to die. I had a lot of questions after I died. I figured out some of them in Spectator, but others wouldn't be clear until after I collected and analyzed the footage from other players as well as look through the after action review file. I was happy with how Charlie had performed, but I wanted to know more about what had been going on around us in the chaotic closing minutes of my virtual life. What I found was, as usual, really interesting. So let's start going through it all. We'll start with Delta, the bells of the ball. Dallas had shifted the withdrawal plan forward after they lost their squad leader to armor, and when they announced they were out of AT, that prompted Dallas to expedite their withdrawal even more. Kevo had brought Delta's truck closer to them in anticipation of that withdrawal. Ghost Boots then took the initiative to move the truck into cover and get it facing the correct direction, which was a good move and helped to counter Kevo's suicidal tendencies. He was trying, but Ghost Boots got him. As Alpha withdrew, they told Delta what to expect. While Alpha didn't know this at the time, their call corresponded to two LAV-25s driving towards the town. Command's orders and Alpha's warning were timed sufficiently for Delta to avoid those threats. So, what went wrong? One, two, the trucks. Two, stop falling back. Fall back. Hey, two, we're leaving. Get the truck. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Delta's mount-up was somewhat sluggish due to casualties and confusion. While mounting up, the first LAV-25 arrived and fired on some Delta members as they were going for the truck. This was called as a heavy machine gun by at least two people in the truck, Stand with them up. urging the driver to leave. Oh god, go, 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 oh, go, 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 Stand by, mount up. No one seemingly turned to see the LAV, they just recognized a new weapon firing and communicated that. Two's in, two's in. Get Get in. in. The, the driver, Ghost Boots, began executing the withdrawal plan that he'd thought through earlier. Unfortunately, both LAVs were now positioned to cover the street, and they immediately engaged and disabled the truck. Holy shit! Oh, my my I'm pulling off! Oh, Get out! Dismount! 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 The biggest problem now was how the Delta members reacted to this event. Despite having an LAV firing on them a moment earlier, no one from Delta appeared to recognize the severity of the threat that was still posed. While smoke was deployed, which is a good thing, despite a good portion of the squad still being mobile, everyone ended up clustering around on the far side of the truck instead of proactively moving casualties to a safer position. The truck itself acted as concealment that would have facilitated withdrawal, as did the smoke deployed near it, but instead Delta stuck close to it Someone's and attempted to treat casualties. For a full minute after dismounting, no movement orders were given, though the incident was immediately relayed on the platoon net. It wasn't until over a minute later that Ghost Boots, an AAR in the second team, urged people to begin moving. We need to be moving, we need to be moving! Delta, any you can, pick up your captain. Contributing to this initial confusion was the squad leader going in and out of consciousness, 
and the Delta One acting team leader, Toadie, being killed outright. Having someone, anyone, step up to take charge as soon as possible would have helped a great deal. Luckily for Delta, who, remember, is out of anti-tank at this point, Roster Roster from Bravo, an overflow that had been sent to get a ride with Platoon Headquarters, which was nearby, had moved towards them and engaged in onrushing LAV, mobility killing it. Now, since Delta hadn't moved from their truck in any appreciable way, the inevitable was soon to happen. Charlie's BMP arrived, looked down the road, and began engaging the LAVs as they drove up. Engage, LAV! The first one had come to a halt directly adjacent to the truck, and the splash of the ATGM hit some of Delta. The second one was slightly further back, and a skilled shot by the gunner, Barifrin, took it out. Second. Hit it. Hit it. At this point, someone from Delta threw more smoke into the road, obscuring the BMP's view. Oh boy. They had to smoke it. It's understandable why this happened, but it lessened the effectiveness of the BMP, temporarily, for engaging targets further down the road. With Delta now covered by the Charlie BMP, Cypher and Ghostwoods had to spend too much time telling people to do things that they should have been capable of doing by themselves and already doing. Hey, you guys fighting! If you're fighting at the burning truck, stop pulling back! If you are mobile, move west, occupy defensive structure, and cover the casualties. Ghost Boost resorted to directly calling people by name, a good practice when a situation is chaotic and nothing else seems to be working. Derp, go to the building. Armored, go to the building. I'm, I'm just gonna pick him up. Mad Cows, go to the building now, here. west. Right. If he lives Wrong direction. Go to the building, Van Owen. Yep, go. I'm fine. Pick him up. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm telling you to go. We just need to pull the fuck back. Armored, you're being left behind. The confusion and sluggishness continued throughout the attempt at Exfil. It took a lot of time and energy to try to get this untangled, but eventually things were somewhat sorted. If you pause the mission right here, it looks like a wonderful success story. Everyone's mounted up and either leaving or ready to leave. So what goes wrong? There are two things. One happens with the BMP, which we'll cover shortly, and the other is with Charlie Lee. If you guys are good, get out of here. Yeah, go. Let's go left. Hard, left. hard left. Hard left. Let's run away. Follow this road. I'll guide you. Yeah, yeah, we're up. We're moving. In the vehicle with platoon headquarters, Cypher is being told insistently that there's another Ural nearby at a marker called, appropriately, 1X Ural. He hops out to go get it and pick up survivors, but the problem here is, of course, that all the Delta members are already mounted up. The lack of clarity over the squad net leaves him thinking that another truck is needed, which gets him to dismount, which throws a wrench into the extract plan. Charlie, this is Delta. I need your uh, Charlie Vic to pick up my stragglers. This fucking one time drill mark's a lie. The truck Cypher had been told was there, which he intended to use to pick up his squad members, is the same truck that I'd proactively had Roster Roster from Bravo go grab earlier. That truck is the one here, driving out of the area, with Delta on board. Well, most of Delta. Skipping ahead to after the BMP was disabled, which I'll cover later, what happens here is another episode of confusion. We're going north to the Charlie Trucks Mark. If you guys don't get there, you're going to be left behind. You need to go now. SL, you doing alright? No, but we'll be there in a second. Somehow, despite telling Delta survivors where to go and what to do, and that they'd be left behind if they didn't follow, they instead broke off and held at a building nearby. This doomed them and made it harder to get Charlie away as well. Without a POV from one of those Delta members, it's hard to say what exactly happened that got them to turn around instead of follow us, but it seems that something happened and that that something led directly to their demise. So moving on to the Delta lessons learned. Delta's withdrawal was sluggish. Carrying wounded to treat them in the truck would have saved some time and potentially allowed them to make it away from the road before an LAV arrived. While mounting up, it would have been helpful for someone to be watching the road for as long as possible before getting in. Doing this likely would have allowed the LAVs to be seen in time and reacted to. It's surprising that no one looked behind them and noticed it at this point, as that's the kind of thing I use track hour for all the time, but you know, it happens. Also, it's notable that some vehicle configurations in armor and different mods are exceptionally quiet, so that may have played a role here as well. It seems like at least one person, and potentially two, heard the LAV fire at them before mounting up. This was a dire threat to a soft-skinned truck, so taking a moment to check that threat before driving into the street could have made a difference. 
the reaction to the Delta vehicle being disabled was less than ideal. A team leader taking initiative and getting people pointed in the same direction, having them carry wounded away from the vehicle and enemy threat, could have helped a lot. Individual proficiency plays a large part here as well. There are some notable examples of people not really knowing what they were supposed to be doing and thus making it more difficult for everyone to get things done. One of the deficiencies of this moment is seeing Delta members dragging people instead of picking them up to carry them. Dragging is much slower and limits how far you can get, whereas by carrying people you can move them greater distances much more rapidly, such as to the buildings nearby. Basically, the site that they stopped at, that's the X. You're supposed to get off the X, and they didn't do that. Cypher and Schmur moving to take up positions further from the truck was a good move. Having a few more people occupy this building and nearby firing positions earlier could have helped provide cover that could have sped up the movement of the wounded. Taking further casualties in a building is preferable to sustaining them in the open, and you're more able to effectively defend from such a structure. Accountability would have smoothed out the exfil attempt. If Cypher knew that all of his squad members were accounted for and had vehicles to get away with, he wouldn't have hopped out to try to find another vehicle. But of course, this kind of communication is much more easily said than done, especially under duress. Finally, sticking close to the rescue element, in this case, Charlie, would have allowed the remaining Delta members to take some of the spare seats in our three transports and get out of there with us. The inexplicable breakaway that happened here was without question the final nail in their coffin. And it was hammered in pretty hard, like 105 millimeter hard. All right, so that's Delta covered. How about the Charlie BMP? Our BMP, commanded by Freddy, was doing a fine job throughout the mission. They'd helped out Delta earlier and arrived just in time to knock out the LAVs approaching them after the mass CAS event. Everything that went wrong for the Charlie BMP happened at the very end. What's interesting about this sequence is that what happens from my perspective and what happens from Freddy's are similar but have some pretty dramatic differences. Let's watch my perspective first. Charlie Vic, let's try and get out to the Scanning. northwest to our Charlie trucks. Uh, two's down to the three. Roger. Hey, is anyone in the... Uh, uh, there's no one's on the driver's seat right now. Is there no Cypher one in the driver's seat? Platoon is one getting out of there, moving towards Bravo, hold Battle Mission 1. Delta Charlie, Delta, Delta remaining friendlies. And now here's Freddy's, starting at the same place. Charlie. Gunner, Orient 345, engage Copy. infantry on the ground. Gunner, Gunner, 345. Scanning. Roger. Driver, reverse. Driver, reverse. Driver, reverse! Out of there, moving towards Bravo, Battle Mission 1. Charlie, Delta, remaining friendly. The differences here are caused both by the vehicle intercom system and Freddy being turned out. He could clearly hear his crew members on the intercom, but those mounted inside were much less audible due to him being turned out. He couldn't hear me comment on the driver, but from his perspective it didn't really matter since he was already telling him to reverse, and the driver should have heard that. The three contributing factors here were driver issues. The first was that the driver decided to move to one of the bow guns to cover the front of the vehicle. Since the BMP had others on board, they should have been placed in that position instead. In an urban area, things can evolve so quickly that a few seconds delay between a move in order and following that order can be a life or death difference. In this case, from the point at which Freddy first called for reverse to the time the vehicle moved, it was like 13, 15 seconds, somewhere in that range. Driver, reverse! This is a simple recreation of the basic maneuvers asked for, and the distance traveled in this period is more than enough to get it out of the view of the soon to arrive Patton. The second issue was that when investigating this afterward, it was discovered that the driver had misunderstood one of our basic quality of life features. We have a system that allows you to use ear protection when in the vehicles, which will automatically lessen the volume of them so that you can more easily hear what your fellow crew is saying. The driver had this system disabled due to a misunderstanding, meaning that when it mattered most, he couldn't hear Freddy repeatedly urging him to reverse. The final issue is that for this BMP-3, the bow gun positions aren't part of the intercom system of the vehicle. Here, you can hear Bear Friend responding to Freddy on the intercom. It's nice and clear. Load HE, fire past them. Copy. Yeah. When the driver went to the bow gun, he no longer was able to hear Freddy clearly through the intercom, since not only was he not in an intercom position, he was inside of the vehicle while Freddy was turned out. 
And since he was also firing a machine gun, it was only Freddy's final shout, his loudest one, to reverse, that was audible to him, which he immediately acted on. Having his ear pro set correctly would have likely acted as a failsafe for this, though it's still possible that he might not have heard Freddy simply by how noisy everything was. After this, Cypher saying he needed a ride caused the second failure sequence to occur. Freddy called for the vehicle to halt. Hold. And since there had been a roughly 15 second delay between him calling for movement and it actually happening, the BMP halted in a position that was still well in view of the road. Had the original reverse order been carried out, it's likely that the BMP would be somewhere in this general area at that time. Since the BMP was still visible to the road, the M60 appearing caused a split second decision to engage it, influenced by the apparent need to hold in place for Delta lead the mount up. Hold! Holy shit! That's a tank, engage! There is a pat, we're leaving! By the go, time go, Freddy drive, tried to drive. move, the pat had tracked the BMP, track, and then everything went shit. fully to hell as it was knocked out. Charlie Vick's fucked right now, hold on. Bro, hold. Track out. Get out, get out, get out! So to summarize all of that, a driver being in the wrong seat and having volume driver, incorrectly set driver. led to a delay in the BMP moving, which when combined with Delta Lead needing a pickup, meant that the BMP was in a vulnerable position. Being in this position allowed the M60 to see it upon arriving, and a hasty decision to engage it resulted in the BMP being knocked out. This started a cascade in which Cypher, Kevbo, Derp, Killock, MG Bait, Instinct, and I were killed. This was a great example of how little things being wrong can quickly add up to lethal effect. So what are the Charlie vehicle lessons learned? Well, for starters, a driver is responsible for driving. There are times when a driver jumping into a bow gun to supplement the gunner might be useful, but this was probably not one of them, given that they were embarked infantry that could have taken that role instead. Movement at a moment's notice was to be expected, and given that the entire eastern flank of the town was fully exposed to a threat that had included Abrams tanks previously, being ready to go was critically important. Next, Everyone needs to be familiar with the tools available to them. In this case, for our community, the ear pro settings are an important aspect of crew communication. Having it set wrong hurts both the vehicle itself and anyone depending on it. Finally, a BMP going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a tank at close range is going to be rough at best and lethal most likely. While the engagement contextually is understandable, immediately driving out of view of the Patton would have been the safer move. Cypher could have easily ran after us to catch us. As far as Charlie went, I was happy with how both fire teams were able to stick to the plan and keep things organized. Having Charlie fall back to the truck staging area and position for exfil worked to give the enemy two groupings to worry about. The Charlie 1 and 2 grouping, and then the Charlie vehicle and Delta area. This kept them from all massing on a single target and prevented us from having to worry about taking additional Charlie casualties and trying to help out Delta. The BMP, myself, and our medic were sufficient to relieve pressure on Delta enough to get them moving again, and bringing the rest of Charlie into the area would have introduced unnecessary risk for little gain. When MG Bait and Instinct saw the Patton drive by after our BMP was knocked out, it's completely understandable they maneuvered to try to engage it. The situation was evolving so rapidly that taking initiative here was the right thing to do, as there was no saying for sure when it would be time to mount up, and the Patton could have potentially blocked that. I was task saturated to the point that I didn't fully process this call from them, else I would have probably tried to keep them closer to the extract vehicles. Noel, from Platoon Headquarters, had been tasked to bring a truck to help Delta out. As she reached the edge of our radio range, the message she sent was garbled enough, and I was busy enough that I didn't process what she was asking. She switched to Delta's net right after, so it was never repeated, and all I saw was a truck drive by for some reason. I was confused as to why it drove past like that, and thinking that there was still something for me to do for Delta, I headed their way. As things fell apart, I had two objectives to achieve. One was getting Charlie out of there. The other was getting Delta's survivors out. I had Charlie ready to move at a moment's notice, but Delta's situation had become unclear after they lost us in the withdrawal, and there was now a tank in the immediate vicinity. As I moved to assess this, I realized I was out of time. Having Charlie withdraw here was a necessary call, and while I knew there was a near certainty that those of us left behind would die as a result, it was better to lose us than lose everyone. One, two, mount up in one of those trucks and leave. Go to Alpha Battlefield if you want. Having them leave one truck behind for us gave us a way to withdraw if that eventually presented itself. But as you know, it did not. Yes. In the end, Charlie made it out with 13 people two of the BMP crew, 
the medic, one team leader, fortunately not MG Bait, and the rest of the squad. MG Bait, Instinct, and I were killed, as was Freddy when the BMP was knocked out. Roster Oster from Bravo drove one truck out with another Bravo member, as well as five members of Delta. Noel drove the platoon headquarters vehicle, which included the four members of that, as well as two Delta members. When issues of legroom arose, Cypher graciously hopped out to catch a ride on an imaginary truck like the gentleman he is, leaving just the one Delta member to be extracted. Three members of Delta were in the BMP, including their medic, and abandoned it after it was disabled. Altogether, this left four Delta members to be overrun by a tank that had been magnetically and fatefully drawn towards Kevvo. Two members of Delta had died in their truck at the LAV ambush. Noel, coming back to rescue Delta in a truck, was gunned down and killed just before reaching them. All things considered, this was a highly successful extract under serious duress. Instead of being abandoned, Delta had half its strength preserved, and Charlie made it out with the majority of the squad intact. And let's not forget what Alpha did. As Charlie and Delta were working to extract, Platoon Headquarters tasked Alpha to send their BMP back, along with a Humvee of infantry, to try to help out. Alpha Vic, Delta. I'm gonna send one with you to support whatever's left of Charlie Delta. Not yet. Oh, You're basically no. gonna be independent, so uh, Godspeed to both of you. This BMP ended up arriving and destroying the M60 just as I died, and instinct bled out before the infantry were able to find them. It was a good effort that almost saved us, and it almost certainly helped draw attention away from the Charlie truck as it was withdrawing. Leading a mission like this is always a complex balancing act. Small things can have major repercussions that are hard to plan for. For instance, if Delta's vehicle had left 30 seconds earlier, you wouldn't be watching this video. The following are things that could have also made it play out differently, not necessarily better, but they'd influence the dynamics we saw unfold here. When initially establishing the defense, swapping Delta and Charlie's positions could have worked better given that Delta had no BMP of their own, and Charlie's sector was less likely to receive armored contacts given the enemy's seeming initial direction of attack. Having Charlie relieve Delta mid-defense would have been a little messier, but it could have also helped to utilize the Charlie BMP in defending that avenue of attack. Barring that, having the Charlie BMP hang around Delta's position while he withdrew could have prevented the LAVs from being the threat that they were. Having Delta withdraw earlier, or as a first element due to their lacking anti-tank capability, could have gotten them out of the area before any further armor could threaten them. The withdrawal plan was pushed up about as quickly as possible once they noted their situation and lacking AT, but given that they had no armor of their own for the whole time, that could have been pushed up a bit more or done in a fashion where they weren't waiting for Alpha to leave first. It's easy to say these things in hindsight, of course. I mean, I have, I have hours and hours of time to script this, to second guess everything, and to armchair quarterback the hell out of it. Overall, this was an incredibly interesting scenario to dissect, as well as a highly enjoyable one to play through. Being able to see how different pieces interacted with each other in a chaotic environment brings out the complexity of large-scale armor, as well as the leadership and personal proficiencies that shape how a scenario unfolds. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I did creating it. But before you go, there are a few things you can do that would help ensure more episodes of these are made. There's the basic aspects of subscribing, enabling notifications, ringing the bell, there's also my Patreon campaign, which directly supports the effort required to produce videos like Hindsight, Art of Flight, the VTTP series, and my year in review videos. Patreon is what makes these possible to continue with. Aside from that, the best assistance comes from spreading the word and sharing this with anyone you think would enjoy it. Finally, if you have thoughts on what happened here or aspects that you particularly enjoyed, let me know in the comments. Thanks as always for the support. Until next time, take care.